Hello and welcome to this session of instructional videos on Ecosim Building Designer V8i. And in this session, we've devoted it entirely to stairs and everything that goes with them. The treads, the risings, the nosings, the goings, the flights, the handrails, you name it, it's going to be in here. And so to start with, we're going to come into our, this view here, view one, and we're going to come across to the navigation toolbar at the top here, and we're going to click on window area. With that, we're then going to click once around about here and just describe a small square there and click again and we zoom straight in come across to our other top view and do the same thing i have high hopes for this one in just a few moments and the same in our elevation and once you've done that you can then right click to reset the tool in total now the beautiful thing about building information modeling is that as your project evolves more and more information is going to be imbued onto your model and there may come a time when you actually need less and less information to fulfill your design spec and scope Building Designer gives you the ability to do either at any point through a number of ways. Level display is one, we've already seen that, but the other way is through a humble yet powerful element selection. So let's start up here and draw an element selection around these objects here and any of the objects contained starting and finishing inside that selection set are now highlighted. We can use humble element selection to actually subtract or add to that selection set. And we can do it in two ways. One is that we can come up here and click on any of the icons here in the bottom row. Or secondly, if we hit the escape key, you'll see straight away there are letters associated with it. So we can press the letter K and immediately it selects subtract. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to come into our model here and deselect our front wall and any of the objects with it. It's as simple as that. And now that we've done that, if we press the H key, we go back in our element selection. We can come and just click right click over any of the objects here and say isolate. And immediately all active views are immediately have everything other than a selection set suppressed for the time being. Just click once more in any view and we come back to our construction objects that they originally modeled in. Now let's come and do something interesting here because these are independently driven views. So I'm going to come in here and apply a display set, which I'm going to choose illustration default. And with that, I'm going to rotate that to an isometric. The next one down is elevation view. I'm going to have transparency on again, just default. Now I have three views, three independent ways of rendering and looking at them. But in this view, I need to have a bit more information to help me out. So I'm going to come up here to view attributes or press control B and unselect or unhighlight display set and when I do that in just this view you can see I have all of my information brought back to me at my fingertips so now let's go on and make and place some staircases come to our task base interface to our architectural design tab 10 rows down first icon in place stair our stair placement settings dialog box opens and the first thing we need to do is choose the actual type of stair that we're going to be placing that is done by this jump box here we're going to choose the concrete stair monolithic and after that we're going to click on the next icon which is stair properties the stair properties dialog box opens for us and one of the first things we can do is to actually save this specific stair for ourselves for faster recall in the future to do that we're going to come here to save assembly name and we're going to call this project hyphen stair number one and after that we can hit the tab key or click in there in the next field with our mouse and enter in concrete stair just a description and then just click okay straight away we're switched out from our concrete monolithic to our specific staircase that we've just saved and now we can start editing any of the parameters and values of of our parametric stair that we wish you can see when we have our stair height, which we need to have it as 16 foot four because that's the height of our uh, floor to floor level. You can see we have a stair width, which is three foot eight, and we can alter any of these values we want. The key one here is our riser target height. And you can see here that we have a riser target height of seven inches. So by setting this, building designer will then automatically go away and fit in the most efficient economical set of stairs based off a seven inch riser target height that it can in the space allocated. We can alter any of the parameters here. In fact, we can come down to our constraints and this really helps us when it comes to complying with code or regulations because we can actually set these for ourselves, lock them away so that our staircases can actually 
adhere to those particular regulations, be they project, be they client, or be they national body ones. You can save individual ones here by coming in and saying a new constraint definition and saving that thusly. And if you need to edit any of these, you can come to the third icon. When you click on that, all of them become live. Now we can go forward and actually edit them for new code or new project requirements. Moving on from there, we have the ability to look at treads, risers, stringers, landings, and also the annotation. How much information is going to be displayed for and in our model at any one time? You can see that we have the ability to display the up label and everything down here, including our break line, which we can choose in our jump box here from either straight or slanted. We're going to choose slanted and we can actually choose a cell as a break symbol too. But let's come into properties because this is where we really do flex our muscles with building designer staircases. You can see that we have a fire exit. Is this true or false? Well, we saying it is for this case, it is true. A place of refuge, type ID and the name, we're going to type in there stair number one. And with that, we're going to leave it as it is. We're going to move on to the next area, which is the actual type of stair. We're going to choose half turn U. And with that, we're looking at stair alignment. And this is the placement point of our staircase. And we're going to choose left landing. And now with all our parameters set, we can move our mouse into our model. And you can see on the left hand landing spot, we have our staircase in isometric, in elevation, and in our wireframe plan here. And we can use AccuDraw and AccuSnap just to click once. And now once we've given it anchor point, we can now actually place how many risers are going to be in each flight. In this case, we're going to have 14 in each. We're going to click once there, and now we can move across here to using AccuDraw and AccuSnap to actually set the landing. And with that, we have our staircase. We can even go one place better than that, because if we come into our isometric here and choose Rotate View, let's say we take our view rotation to the top, we're now going to start editing this very, very simply. For instance, if we select our staircase in any of the views that we have, we immediately are presented with a great deal of data that we can utilize. The first one are these two little blue triangles here, because if we click those once and now look in your isometric twice, our staircase changes direction. You can see that in the plan it has the arrow is going the different direction. Coming further down there, you can see that we have a plus and a minus at the landing. So if we want to reduce this down, just click on the minus key and you can see it takes it back one stair. Just click on that once, twice, and we add another stair to our flight. So now with that, we could actually go even one stage further because by clicking on any of the dimensions here, you can see they are dynamically editable at any point. In this case, we're going to make this landing a little wider so that two people can comfortably pass on it as they go up or down. I'm going to click on that and you can see straight away my landing is increased with depth and with any edit to a staircase, you may have to reposition it slightly, but don't worry, just right click on that, choose move and now just click once, twice and we're back in business. Right click, reset and we're straight away have got our new staircase placed and we're ready to go forward to the next session, which is actually placing a handrail on it. To do that, we come back to our task based interface, 10 rows down, second icon in, place railing. The place railing dialog box opens up for us. And first thing we need to do is click on this jump box. And you can see we have a number of catalog instances or project specific ones for us to choose from. The first one we want to look at out of two is our wall mounted handrail. As soon as we do that, our preview changes. Our placement options are going to be on the existing staircase and our placement side is going to be on the left hand side. The next thing we need to do is click on the railing construction settings. So our railing construction settings opens and we need to change a couple of the parameters that are involved with here. The first one is our profile. I'm going to come across here to the side offset dialog box here, click twice in there and just say we want to actually beef this up to one and a half inches. We're going to click on our ends tab here and inside here also, we're going to bump this up to one and a half inches as well. With that, we click OK. 
Now all we need to do is come and click at the bottom left hand side of our staircase. Building designer goes away and places that handrail for us, mapping it entirely around the landing and up the next flight of stairs. But we can go one step further. So we're going to click on the jump box and choose railing with handrail. We get a brand new preview. We're going to choose the same placement method. We're going to change the placement side to right. And with that, we're going to click on our staircase. Building designer now places that handrail and maps it around the inner part of our flight of stairs. But there are different ways and other ways to place handrails, etc., in building designer. To do that, first off, we need to perhaps delete our inside handrail and come back to our task base interface to the tenth row down, third icon in, extract the railing placement line from a stair or railing. Once we do that, if we come up here to our attributes and change the color of this and perhaps the weight also to give it a bit more punch, give it a good indicative, we're going to click on the right side of our staircase again. You can see that if we zoom in to our elevation here, it's going across the entire nosings of the actual staircase. And if we come into our staircase here, one last other thing we need to make sure of, if we just zoom out a bit here and then pan up to the top of our staircase, we may need to rotate this a little bit. Our railing will not stop exactly at the top here. We need to actually carry over. To do that, we're going to use something called Smart Line, and that's over in your task base interface here. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to make sure that AccuSnap is selecting that, and AccuDraw is going to help us with that. We're going to take that here, click at the inside edge of that tread there, and then moving across, we're going to move our line tangential and hit our enter key. This uses a smart lock. We can now throw down a construction line for our, to our bottom line to make sure they're in line with each other. Once we do that, we can right click and we're next to go. The last thing we need to do is to actually chain them together so that there is not two distinct lines, but one. Come back to your task base interface, come to the drop element dialog box and click and hold on it and choose create complex chain. Once that dialog box is open, make sure your method is automatic. You have simplified geometry selected and all we need to do now is click once on our smart line, click again to make sure it includes the profile and click once more and accept. Now, if we look at it, it is all one particular profile. Now, there's one other thing we have to do here. That's to place another smart line. And in this case, we're going to change the line style. We're going to come across to a dash dot line here because we're going to choose from here. And from that, we're going to pan up a little bit. Right click, press the S key, let the AccuDraw compass swivel for you. And now you can click once and reset because we're going to come back into our modified dialog box here in our task base interface called trim to intersection. With that, let's just come out of here just a little bit more and we're going to select the profile. We're going to select this dashed dot line here and you can see straight away the building designer immediately forms the actual intersection between them. So we know that everything is lined up and with that, we can now go and place our railing. We can select that dashed and dotted line now and we can just delete it because we're sure that both the upper and the lower ones are correct in their placement. So in our task base interface, 10 rows down, two icons in, place handrail. The place handrail dialog box opens. We're going to choose railing with a handrail. We're going to look at our preview, our placement options. We're going to place method is via profile. And then after that, we're going to click on the railing construction settings. The rail construction settings dialog box opens and we're going to alter some of the values here as well. In our posts, we're going to come in here and see that our base offset here, we're going to enter in negative and then colon and 10. And with that, we can then highlight that copy. And what we can do after this is just paste this into all the other fields that are relevant. So now that we've got that, we're going to be looking at the balusters. And in that, you can see our shape name. We're going to click on that, jump, click on that jump box. And we're going to scroll back up slightly because what we want is the one and one quarter standard piping. And now we can click OK. And with that, we can click 
on our profile. Building designer goes away, and boom, there we have it. A fantastic bespoke railing based off a profile that we created, adjusted, and made sure that we have that return at the top of the stairs because it does adhere to code and our project spec. And that is staircases and handrails in Ecosim, Building Designer V8i. Thank you very much.